Give me a target. Abolista, your command. I'm a long say. One bullet's all I need. Give me a target.
Abolish to your command. Armor will say. The Lyrians marched in silence, too tired to keep in step with the drums. Suddenly, the wind rose to a howl, and there was a loud crash of thunder. Blast! Meave leapt from her saddle. We camp here. Pitch the tents, quickly! Quickly! As the soldiers rushed to unload the wagons, a wall of water came down, soaking them to the bone. Later, they sat in their leaky tents, huddled, teeth chattering. Violent coughs rocking their frames. The storm raged the night through, then finally passed before dawn. Meave emerged from her tent to wring out her coat. Raynard approached, his gait heavy, his face grim. Your Majesty, several men of the 11th, a dozen or so, sought to flee last night. Sentries stopped and bound them. Now they await your judgment. Meave fastened her still wet coat. She knew well why the men had tried to desert. They longed for their kin, had lost sight of victory, perhaps even no longer believed. Yet the marching and fighting seemed destined to go on forever. The Queen sympathized. She too was spent, and many doubts plagued her. Yet she knew the deserters had to be punished. The question was, to what extent? Meave entered the tent where the prisoners stood. Some of the men looked away, ashamed at their deed. Others raised their gazes to meet hers, 
their eyes red, tearful, pleading. You all know the penalty for desertion. Meave said to the soldiers bound at wrist and foot. I ought to have every last one of you hanged. Yet, we've come far along a treacherous road. Endured hardships extreme. This I considered against your crime. You shall lose rank and receive no pay for one year. Now get out of my sight. Immediately! The deserters mumbled their gratitude and rushed out of the tent, fearing the Queen might yet change her mind. Meave then left for her quarters, anger and bitterness eating her up from the inside. Gods, have we passed the very threshold into hell? Close ranks. None is to step off the path without clear orders to do so. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Start.
There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Bit the white of an eye from half a league away. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Cut a lamb, the shank. This beauty go to waste. Thing about slings, they hide well. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. You sure about that?
Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Any battles? Hungry like a wolf I am. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth?
This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. The white of an eye from half a league away. The bigger they are, easier they are to target. Waiting for a personal invitation? Could murder a paint.
You mad? Don't shake that! Nothing personal, I assure you. While accustomed to life mid swamp monsters and black magic, Angren's denizens never dared enter Isgith. The Lyrians only once saw signs of a human presence there when they spotted a group of thatched roof huts amongst alders. That settlement, is it inhabited? Meave asked, turning to her scouts. Impossible to say from this distance, Your Grace. The Lyrians entered the village, swords in hand, prepared to fight. But not a soul nor a beast came forth. Some homes had collapsed from rot, while tall grass concealed the paths between them. Yet, someone had been there not long past, for fresh ghoul cadavers lay by the well. Meave knelt beside the corpse of one cut clear in half. The beast's killer had been exceptionally strong, and wielded a razor-sharp sword. More likely to come around. Meave leapt to her feet. A man in thick leather armor had emerged from one of the huts. Transfixed by his cat eyes, the queen nonetheless sensed he was rather badly hurt. Were that true, my scouts would have blown their horns. The man pulled out a pendant shaped like a bear's head. It hummed and twitched as if striving to free itself of its chain. Far as monsters go... He said, lips curling into an unpleasant smile. Witchers aren't usually wrong. A moment later, a scream pierced the air. Quickly, instinctively, Meave drew her sword and lunged forth. I don't know why I got my scar? I 
I feel a strong magic here, my lady. Something controls these creatures. Any petals? Hungry like a wolf, I am. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Don't you worry yourself, your grace. We'll get her done in no time.
company! Forward march! Авардана Джеффи. That'd be the last of them. Should be quiet for a bit. The Lyrians emerged victorious, due in no small part to the Witcher. Thanks for the help. Name's Ivo, Witcher, School of the Bear. Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. Well, well. Didn't expect to see anyone out here. And certainly not a queen with an army in tow. We're not here by choice. I bet not. No one plans to pass through Isgith. And you? What's brought you here? A contract, perchance? That's right. Hunting a monster. I know your service is to be rather dear. Who could afford a witcher's bounty in these wretched swamps? Nilf Guardians. Blast, of course. Preparing the land for settlement. Call the monsters, drain the swamp, then bring in slaves. Doubtless from the north. Maybe. I got paid in advance. I didn't see the need to ask any questions. But did you have to take the coin? Don't you see what they're doing? Forgive me, your majesty, but seems to me you're confusing witchers with knights errant. We don't fight oppression, right wrongs, or avenge orphans. We slay monsters for coin. And it don't matter whose head's on the front or whose coffers it's from. This beast you're out to slay, what is it? Hang on. You mean to tell me you've led your force into Isgith and don't even know what lives here? I believe I was clear. We're not here by choice. Yeah, but now that you are here, it'll take a minor miracle to get you out. Isgith swamps? Realm of a truly dangerous being. Elves call it Gvern Iker, the Bloody Mistress. Over generations, locals twisted the name until it became Gurnikora. Indeed. I've heard it. So you've also probably seen her beloved fruit. Leeches and ticks. You'd all be wise to stay away from them. This Gurnikora? What is she, exactly? Depends who you ask. Elves saw a fallen goddess in her. Never managed to cut her down while they lived here. But they did stem her growth, kept her from growing stronger. As for the local humans, spirit of a cursed princess, that's their take. Deep belief, actually. Care to elaborate? 
Stories that she was riding north to marry a Temerian duke. Whole retinue and caravan got lost, wagons got stuck, everybody drowned in the bog, quicksand got him, that sort of thing. Gurnicora grabbed a root before the quagmire swallowed her whole, hollered for hours, but there wasn't a soul around to hear her. Leeches, hundreds covered her, settled in for a royal feast, sucked her dry, drained her to pretty much the last drop. Fear and revulsion so completely overcame her spirit, she couldn't pass into the afterlife. So she came back, revived by Isgith's magic. Ugh. A chilling tale. Yeah. Except made up, probably. Don't believe the elven legends, either. Gurnicor is a monster, plain and simple. Extremely dangerous, sure. But just a monster. The leeches and ticks. You called them her fruit. It's kind of complicated. We've time enough. Hmm. Gurnicor is a little like a vampire. They're kindred creatures. Except, instead of feasting on the blood of others, she feeds them her own. I'm not certain I understand. They're parasites, right? She puts them on her body, feeds them her own blood. Then hangs them on shrubs and trees. Ugh, to what end? To other monsters, their delicacies. Sweet, juicy, full of Gurnicora's blood. Irresistible. Any beast that tastes that loses its mind, turns into Gurnicora's slave. So, if your paths cross and push comes to shove, she's not going to be alone. Find yourself fighting the whole damn swamp. Hmm. How are we to fight her? How might she be killed? Sorry, sharing secrets. Just not something we do. Not even with those who saved your life just moments past. We gotta wait till she starts feeding the parasites. She's weakest then. Stand a chance to hurt her. Right. So we attack only once she puts the leeches to her skin. Yeah. And when you kill her, if you kill her, any beasts under her spell will weaken considerably. And then, you gotta burn her corpse. I mean it, understand? Burn it. And you? Will you not hunt her any longer? No, oh, I will. Just need to prepare. Realize that today. Gotta brew some potions, blade oils. Come back in a few days. I don't even have that much time. Nilfgaard's hordes pursue us. I must march on. In that case, wish you luck. Lots of it. I suppose there's no argument that would persuade you to ride with us. Your grace, mutations strip us of emotion, not reason. The Witcher vanished amidst the trees. And Meave... Meave simply hoped her soldiers had not overheard any part of their conversation.